Hey, good afternoon, uh, Brookfield Zoo followers. My name is Scott, and I'm an animal care specialist here at Brookfield Zoo. I'm also joined by Jamie, who is another animal care specialist. And today we are doing a special video on the goat. And no, I'm not talking about Michael Jordan. We are talking about our dwarf Nigerian goats here at the zoo. So coming up this week, we have World Goat Day. So we're putting these guys on the spotlight, and we're going to celebrate them. Um, you're joining me here in Wild Encounters, where if you've been to the zoo and walked through here, you've probably recognized the goats, or at least heard them belting out. Um, we have 21 Nigerian dwarf goats in this exhibit, and um, they've all, I would say, acclimated and become very friendly with all of us here. Um, so some facts about goats that are kind of interesting that a lot of people may not know. Um, there are over 300 domestic goat breeds in the world. Um, these ones are relatively small, as the name suggests, They're, that they have dwarf in the name, but they're a pretty small breed. Most of these goats are around 70 pounds, but they can get quite a bit bigger, and they range in, um, range in different sizes and weights. For example, Mr. Pants, if you're familiar with our goats here at the zoo, Mr. Pants is pretty popular, and he's our biggest goat, and he is well over 100 pounds, but we have some little ones here that are quite a bit smaller than him. Um, as I mentioned, there are a lot of goat breeds in the world, and here in the United States, we are very um, dairy and beef cattle centric, I would say. Um, so we, we tend to think of milk production and beef production as, um, you know, big drivers in our agriculture and a lot of uh, our food source. But goats actually are the most, um, most used meat and milk source in the world. So it's estimated that about 65 to 70 percent of the world consumes goat milk. Um, so that's kind of fun to teach people because we're, we're so used to cows and we use goats for other things, but you're pretty used to seeing goats on farms, goats in petting zoos, things like that. Um, but today we're going to walk around with some of our goat friends. We can walk over here by the window and see some of our goats getting fed, which is a very big attraction at the zoo. If you ever walk through wild encounters and see the goat food and the pet the feeders, um, they're getting fed a specific type of grain that we like to give them that is good for goats. Now, contrary to some myths that are out there, or some popular beliefs, goats don't actually eat anything they come in contact with. A lot of people think that goats will just consume anything. There's that old myth about the uh, tin can and goats chewing on them, but really where that likely came from is that if a goat were seen chewing on a tin can, it's more likely that they might have been chewing on the label on the can or uh, trying to eat some of the glue off of it. So goats actually have um, lips that they use to sort of sense things and pick up on foods that they want to eat. Um, although they're often thought of mainly as grazers, they're kind of foragers. They eat a lot of different things. They'll eat um, leaves and shrubs and different grasses and things. So here at the zoo, outside of just the treats that they're getting from the guests with the petting zoo food that they get, um, we have a we have a grain that we like to give them that is really good and nutritious for them. And we also like to give them a lot of hay. So they get, um, you know, big chunks of hay in the morning and in the afternoon, and that way they can kind of feed on that hay all day long. Um, and the way that they eat and the way that they um, digest their food is a little bit different and pretty unique from what we are used to or how we digest our food. So if you've ever heard of like a cow or seen a cow chewing on cud where they're just sitting around grazing and chewing on something and you could watch the goats here and it doesn't seem like they've eaten anything for a while yet they're just sitting there chewing and no they're not just pretending to eat. Um, they are actually chewing on cud and what that means is they are ruminate, ruminants. So um, they're, they ruminate with their food so they have a four chambered stomach um, and that first chamber of the stomach is kind of broken down by microbes. Um, and sometimes they'll bring their food back up and chew on it and uh, helps them digest. And then their food will also move to other chambers of the stomach where it's broken down acidically or uh, and finally will be broken down by enzymes and then they get nutrients absorbed um, in their small intestine. So if you've been here to the zoo and you've seen the goats standing around the yard chewing, they're not just, they're definitely not chewing on tin cans. And they are not chewing on, uh, they may not be chewing on food that they just recently ate either. Um, one other kind of fun characteristic that people like to know, I'll see if uh, you can get some attention here from one of our friends. Um, one thing that jumps out to people a lot of times too is goats' eyes. So 
their eyes are very, their pupils are very different than ours are. And you can notice here um, that our, our buddy Dyson, who has very rectangular pupils. And the reason their eyes are like that is because it gives them a much wider vision, uh, field of vision than we have. So, like with the goats, because they are prey animals, and you know, they tend to, tend to loll around in fields, chewing on stuff. Um, that those eyes actually help them see a lot more than a, you know a lot wider field of vision than we're able to see. So that way they can see predators and other things. Um, for most goat breeds are domestic. We um, goats are actually one of the oldest domesticated animals that we know of. Um, some records show that they were back in herds and people people in the Middle East may have used them in herds as far as 10,000 years ago. Wow. So these goats have been around for a very long time and the Nigerian dwarf breed specifically is originated in West Africa um, so they're very adaptable they're very used to hot dry climates um, but they can also deal with the cold temperatures so at the zoo here you know Chicago weather is every day could be totally different we could have a 75 day degree tomorrow and then four days later it could be 30. And uh, they're actually really good at adapting to that. So they, on these really hot, dry days or even hot, humid days, um, they're very good at absorbing, you know, taking in water, taking in food, but they can deal with that heat. But then at the same time, on those really cold days during the winter, they grow really thick fur and they're able to handle those temperatures. But these goats specifically are pretty built for the warm weather. Another characteristic you'll notice like like our friend Sophie here, who has a very good beard. Similar to um, some of our employees, whose names I will not mention, <laughs> goats do have beards. And they, uh, despite what people think, it is the males and the females that both have beards. Now some breeds of goats may just be the males, but with our dwarf Nigerians, you can tell that most of the, most of the uh, goats in this yard actually do have some pretty gnarly beards. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about our, the way we care for our animals here at the zoo and the way we care for our goats because obviously this is not a farm there. You know, we have um, goats here in this yard that we care for and as part of our husbandry, um, we take all our goats, we have 21 goats and every month we tr uh, trim their hooves, so we'll trim all four hooves. So that way their feet don't, their hooves don't get overgrown, which could lead to some foot problems or some uh, medical problems for them. That is part of the grooming that we do here with them, and um, I think they appreciate it. <laughs> but goats in the wild will often wear their feet down on hard rocks or hard surfaces. Um, we have some big rocks built in here, or benches, um, that they can <laughs> climb on. Um, goats are naturally very good climbers. Their feet are designed to um, just grip onto things, really climb really well, so whether it be a hard, round, jaggedy rock or a smooth bench that people are supposed to sit on. Um, they love climbing on everything. So I would not recommend having them in your house because they will probably climb all over your couch. And if you know goats, you know that they like to poop a lot too and they will not warn you about it. So um, this bench is all right for them to hang out on, but um, they just like to show that they love climbing. They like being up high. And as uh, part of our part of our tour here through the goat yard today, we're going to give them some treats. So I talked about how they really like to forage for things. Um, some of the some of the stuff that we give them, the grain that we give them at the zoo, and the shrubs and leaves. So we actually brought um, a couple different treats for them. Jamie, you want to grab some some browse? Yeah. So we brought some browse with us today. Um, at Brookfield Zoo, we actually have a partnership with ComEd where. Um, it works out really well for our animals because a lot of the trees in the area that uh, will fall down in a storm, like we've had a lot of storms recently, or if uh, they have to do some work on power lines, they often have to trim trees down. <laughs> They're nice enough to bring us all this extra browse, so all our animals love getting those fresh greens. And as you can tell, goats are very excitable about their food. Um, they take it pretty seriously, which I, I do as well. I mean. I'm pulling up to like Popeye's drive through I get pretty excited like they do with their browse. So we're gonna watch them uh, forage here on some of their leaves and get some treats that they don't get every day. So that's part of their husbandry, but also part of their enrichment. We like to enrich them with a lot of different uh, types of things that, you know, they can get excited about and some different types of foods that they're not just eating every day. So how come goats are so numerous 
um, in other parts of the world? Um, there's a couple different reasons. Um, they're very easy to take care of. Uh, they, they take up less space and they, they cost a lot less than, say, taking care of cattle. Um, also, as I mentioned, like with this breed and a lot of other goat breeds, they're very adaptable to different climates. So, um, when, it, when they're in a really hot, dry climate where, you know, land might not be as fertile as we're used to in a lot of areas in the United States, um, they're actually really, really easy to take care of. As you can see, they're pretty friendly too, so... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, okay. They're very friendly. A lot of people like to keep them even as pets. So in the U.S., you're probably, you might even know somebody that has a goat as a pet, and that is not uncommon. Um, as long as you have the space and the, you know, the ability to take care of them, they're, they're very friendly. I kind of like to think of them as big dogs. <laughs> and who's your favorite goat? My favorite goat, I would say, is probably CK, who is currently scrounging for some treats. Um, he's, he's my favorite. He's your favorite, I too. I really like CK. He's a very sweet goat. I have a couple other favorites. Um, Sharpie here, I've always been a big fan of because he's got this little mohawk. If you've ever seen Gremlins, I always call him oh, Spike yeah. because he looks like the Gremlins, or the Spike from Gremlins. Uh, but I would say that probably the biggest fan favorite is Mr. Pants, who I talked about earlier as being our biggest goat. As you can tell, even though his head is invisible right now, he is a very large goat and a lot larger than a lot of the other ones. But despite his size, he's really sweet. So I think a lot of people, um, I would say he's very good at fighting for his food because he is so large. He doesn't really need to fight, actually. He just kind of he just gets muscles in the his way. way in, yeah. Um, so a lot of people have taken to Mr. Pants. I've had a lot of guests come to the zoo, and they actually will specifically name drop him and look for him. And the reason he is named Mr. Pants is because he's got this pattern here where he's black up top and white down here, so it kind of looks like he's wearing white pants. <laughs> I know Diablo is also a fan favorite. Diablo mm -hmm. is the second biggest goat, and he is yeah. also a fan favorite. Um, he's a very sweet goat. He he, he gets a little uh, he gets a little crazy sometimes, but he's unique. He's yeah, he's a little pushy, <laughs> but we kind of love him for it. He's hilarious. And you said there's about 300 different species. Yeah, um, over 300. How how big in size do they range? Um, they can get pretty large, actually. Um, I, I don't for the for the largest species. I don't know exactly how how heavy they would get or how big they would get, but I would say that our goats here are pretty like middle of the road. Even Mr. Pants, for being the biggest one in the yard among this species, um, they can get quite a bit bigger than that. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of them grow different crazy horns like they um so our goats don't have any horns some of them aren't born with them but also um sometimes they're taken off when they're young just for safety reasons um goats have a tendency to headbutt each other a lot uh they they do that as their hierarchical structure um the males tend to challenge each other so if you're at the zoo sometimes you might see them button heads a little bit and it's nothing nothing bad it's just you know they're kind of their social structure but um when they are taken off, it is painless, it is a safe thing, and we do it at the zoo, or we have them uh, hornless at the zoo because it would be a safety concern for guests as well, because a lot of people like to come in here and hug the goats and pet the goats and... Um, you, you don't want a horn Yeah, you don't, you don't yeah. want horns in your face. But some species of goats have some really cool, like, twisted horns and different things that are, that are pretty unique. Uh, do they all have different personalities? I would say they do, yeah. Um, they, like I was talking about with Diablo, he's a little spicier than uh, <laughs> Mr. Pants tends to be. Mr. Pants is pretty docile. Some of our goats are super docile. They'll just like hang out, lay around all day. Even when people come in the yard, they'll just kind of chill. Um, <laughs> some of our goats are very rambunctious and they will spend a lot of their day just following people around, nudging them, chewing on their clothes. Um, so I would say they definitely all have different personalities. And it really helps us too because we get to know each individual goat pretty well. Not only by name or by color, but just how they act. When you spend every day around them, you really get to know each goat pretty well. <laughs> I Denali here, like she's, them all. she's a little shy, so if we keep walking around, she's just going to keep moving away from <laughs> Oh, okay. Us. Then there's other we goats let, that will we just won't come chase right around. <laughs> Is anybody a bit of a food hoard? 
A food hoard? Well, Mr. I said Mr. Pants, you can kind of tell by his size. Oh, really? Yeah, Picasso. Picasso is, you can see him. He's trying to get If he could, he would squeeze his body completely out of there's a reason we cut those to yeah. a certain amount yeah. of size so that they can't get out. Um, but you'll definitely see them when you come here at the zoo. It's hilarious because you watch guests feed them and you'll see guests go from each window trying to feed different goats and you can actually follow goats like Picasso as they just go window to window trying to get their fill even though he's already had it. Now, sometimes I've seen them wag their tails. What does that mean? Um, I don't know if they... They do it just because, like, they get a little bit excited. Um, they, I don't think, like, you may see it at random times. These goats have a tendency to get excited about almost anything. Um, <laughs> if they see a random keeper, like Craig here walking through, um, they get very excited because they think they might be fed. If they see other animals coming through, we, we take a lot of ambassador animals on walks sometimes, like our reindeer and our llamas, and they get pretty excited because they want new friends. Like I said, goats are very social and they live in large groups, so they would probably take a llama in as one of their own. But um, <laughs> yeah, they just they, uh, they see them wagging quite a bit just because they're, they're very uh, excitable and friendly. All right, well, we're going to wrap up our uh, goat feeding chat here today, but we just want to remind you that we're all celebrating World Goat Day this weekend, so hopefully you can come out to the zoo, and uh, if you come out by noon, we'll have uh, goat feeding available, and you can come meet some of these wonderful goats that we discussed for yourself and uh, give them some food and celebrate World Goat Day. Thanks for joining.